It has finally happened, somebody at Be Quiet remembered that the silent loop AIO line was a thing. And we got a new one. And now it's like really big. I mean, we always had a big one, but now it's like, like bigger. This is the new Be Quiet Silent Loop 3 in 420 millimeters. There are three versions of this AIO, a 240, 360 and the 420 millimeter version, which we have here today. And overall, this is a special one. Be Quiet's Silent Loop line was always their highest tier AIO lineup and the older Silent Loop 2 was like outdated, outdated. But here we are and finally we got a new one. This time, the Silent Loop 3 comes powered by Silent Wing 4 fans. Well, kinda. Technically, the fans included in here are Silent Wing 4 140mm PWM high speed. I know it's, it's, it's a mouthful, but uh, they are spinning at up to 99 RPM while it's pushing up to 78.4 CFM at up to 2.36 mm of H2O. But instead of being just the retail version of the fan, be quiet, use the corner pieces which are only present on the Silent Wing Pro 4. You know, the radiator specific corner pieces, which makes sense. This is an AIO and they are supposed to blow through a radiator, so everything is making perfect sense here. Other than the fan, the most obvious difference to the second generation will be the water block pump combo. Instead of a brushed aluminum design with an ARGB border, we now got two separate RGB, yeah, I, I don't even really know how to call this, like separate lines with a black Be Quiet Company logo in the middle. And the cool thing about this is, if you set it to like RG rainbow thing, uh, every line will be like one color and it, and it does look kind of cool. Doing that, having that mode looks cool. It's a design choice, you like it or you don't, but I mean, at least the LEDs are bright and you can have the cool mode, so there's that. But what I actually want to get to is the part in the back. There we got a 42 by 60 millimeter nickel plated base. Now, Be Quiet has always kept using nickel plated bases in the past. There is nothing new about that. But having such a rectangle instead of a square is definitely something new. And part of the top cap, where we will also find the 3500 RPM fast spinning 4 pin PWM controlled pump, part of that whole thing is sticking out. Now, this is not like lost performance. On both AMD and Intel, the chip is pretty much centered and it is fully covered, like more than fully covered. So there is no like uh, extra performance to be gained there. But what having such a huge base does give you or does allow you to do is mount the thing on an STRX socket, at least for the 360 and for 20 millimeter version. But while we are here, the pump isn't particularly loud, I would describe it as slightly less loud than the one on the LF3. Noticeable if you have it like running on the table and you are like less than a meter away, but not really hearable once the fans are spinning at all, uh, or if you have it in a, like a closed box in a case. Other than that, we got the usual blast of PR talk, 1800 mm square fin area on the block, which is supposed to be double of what other AIOs in this class can do. You know, the usual stuff which can be proven or disproven in the benchmark section. Something that did kind of surprise me for this like supposedly highest end be quiet AIO is how simple they kept it, like design wise. We got a pretty regular 420mm radiator without much overhang. I counted 20 FPI and 10 water channels. The tubes are 400 millimeters long, adjustable at the water block end and nicely sleeved, though I would have preferred like 450 millimeters at least. This is a 420 millimeter AO, come on guys. All fairly standard for nowadays. But what I am kind of missing is like any heavy Be Quiet branding. I mean, this is supposed to be the new Be Quiet highest tier lineup AIO and no Be Quiet logo on the radiator, which they did on a bunch of other lower class AIOs, so that I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just, I, I expected this. Anyway, included in the box, we get the AIO radiator combi, all three silent wing four fans that need to be mounted after the fact, and all the mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, and even for some older ones. And in an all Be Quiet fashion, they didn't forget the bottle of extra cool 
coolant because in case you want to change the water or if you are thinking that your AIO is thirsty, you can easily open it up with the screw and refill the thing. To get the Silent Loop 3 going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate, shove the Intel screws through the holes all the way back for LGA 1851 and 1700 and the more center hole for older sockets and secure all four screws on the other side using the rubber o-ring. After positioning the backplate behind the motherboard, we can screw the spacers onto the outstricking screws, place the retention brackets on top with the ends pointing towards the CPU and then screw everything down. Over on AMD, we need to take off the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the spacers, followed by the AMD retention brackets with the central part leaning towards the CPU and then screw everything down. Then for both sockets, splash some of the included thermal paste onto the chip, position the block on top and screw everything down, tubes towards the RAM. So far so good, we got a heavily updated water block pump combo, we got the new Silent Week 4 fan spinning at up to 900 RPM, so let's see if this thing can actually perform. First up is Intel, where we benchmark using a 3900K with 3 presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. In the beginning we max out the fans to see how low the cooler can keep the chip, and then we progressively lower the fan speed in 10% steps, whilst noting down the temperature and noise to create a noisy performance curve. For AIO specifically, we always keep the pump running at 100%. At 120 watts running through the socket, the new Be Quiet Silent Loop 3 in 420 yet didn't do too well. Now don't get me wrong, at 29.2 degrees C above ambient, the chip is very, very, very cold. 120 watts on a chip would be like roughly what you could expect uh, when, when doing like a triple A game. And gaming for hours on a chip that is sitting not even 30 degrees above ambient is like a very, very good thing. But looking at the big picture, it's it's like, eh, it's within margin of error of the old Silent Wing 2 in 360 or the new Pure Loop 2 in 280, so it's just like not revolutionary to be honest. And the same applies when compared to similarly sized AIOs, like the Freezer 3 in 420, the Freezer 2 in 420, or the Silverstone Ice Mist in 420. The corresponding noise to performance graph is maybe slightly better, it's not quite the Freezer 3 420, not quite, and I would describe it as somewhat comparable to a light loop in 360. Including a little what the hell jump because such a low workload on such a huge AIO can sometimes yield very weird results when you average like a bunch of runs. Now that was only 120 watts and let's be honest 120 watts on a 420 AIO is not really enough to find out if this thing can perform or not. There is just like not enough heat, especially when there is a nickel plated base instead of a copper one. So let's look at 250 watts. There the Silent Loom 3 420 starts making sense, keeping the chip at 54.9 degrees C makes so much more sense. Now the Silent Loop 3 started to create a distance to older or smaller AIOs and the gap to other 420mm AIOs has become smaller. That said, it's just not the best 420mm AIO we have tested. The LF3 in 420 is still a degree 0.6 ahead and the Ice Mist is almost 4.5 degrees ahead, so uh, yeah. It's not perfect, but it does take the 11 spot, so not bad. In case somebody wonders why the LF3 for 20 results are not the same as they were in previous cooler reviews, that's because this is a new sample. We had some issues with the original LF3 for 20 that we received, as in I am doing some other freezer videos right now, so I had to retest everything and the performance of the original 420 got worse and worse and worse on every time I started the benchmark. So I got a new one and actually there should have been like a freezer video before this one explaining what happened but Be Quiet decided that today is the day they want to release the silent loop so yeah. In a week or two uh, I'm going to release another freezer video and there will be more explanation coming but uh, keep in mind this is a new look at freezer 3 for 20 that's why the results are not the same as they were before. But back to the silent loop 3 and 420. The noise to performance graph for 250 watts looks quite promising. Something I immediately noticed during the noise recordings is Be Quiet didn't make this a uh, brute force performance AIO. Sure, it's not as cold as the LF3 for 20, but it's also not as loud as the previous Silent Loop 360 or the Light Loop in 360. Overall, it's a quite good noise to performance ratio across the line, it's just not perfect. The LF3 and the Ice Mist are still better, but it's still very okay. Pushing the limits at 320 watts made the chip rise to 73.5 degrees C above ambient. Now with the Silent Loop 3 entering into the top 10 and leaving the lower tiered 
be quiet AUs behind. Compared to other higher N 420s, it pretty much remains unchanged. The LF3 420 is slightly better, and so is the Ice Mist. But overall, 320 watts is just brutal, and anything that can keep a noise to performance ratio across the, the fan speed spectrum is a good AIO. And we can do it here too. The noise to performance graph for 320 watts looks pretty identical to the 250 watt. Uh, the light loop 360 just seems to have started to fall behind, but other things remain unchanged. The ratio is pretty good overall if you compare it to older AIOs or air coolers. Quite a bit better compared to the smaller alternatives, but not quite at the level of the ultra high performing ones. Over on AMD we benchmark using a 7950X3D where we average the clock speed across all cores at any given fan speed in 10% steps and then we map it to the corresponding noise giving us a noise to performance ratio. Now for AMD or specifically older X3D line chips which were like a bit different when it came to cooling, I didn't expect the Silent Loop 3 to perform as good as it did, especially because there was no, no offset bracket, no nothing. I don't know but in the end, the Silent Loop 3 in 420 kept a better average clock speed than the Light Loop 360 and the Liquid Freezer 3 in 420, making the fan spin slower and slower pretty much flatlined the thing with the Light Loop, but it was consistently slightly better than the Freezer. That said, we are not talking about like 100 Hz here, we are talking about 15, 20, 25 Hz, so it's not like any of them are heavily downclocking the chip. A 7950X3 just isn't hitting that hard, but the silent loop was indeed better here. So, where are we at? Well, it's definitely an improvement over the last generation, definitely. Now, I don't have an apples to apples comparison, because the silent loop 2 just didn't exist in 420, but overall you can definitely see that one AU can handle 320 watts and the other one just couldn't, so there's that. And that said, I'm not sure if the 420mm model is in fact the best silent loop 3. Hopefully I will get the 360 and 420 at a later point. However, the silent ring 4 series was the defense. Uh, was kind of known that the 140mm were not particularly good on radiators. And because this is a 20 FPI radiator, I might see how the 360 might end up better or being better because the fans are just straight up better. I don't know. Hopefully I will get them at some point and then we will do an individual video for each of them. But uh, yeah, that's actually a possibility that I can, I can see happening. But as for now, this one is supposed to retail for 175 euros which I believe is a bit too hefty. I get that nobody can match Arctic's pricing right now, I just have no clue how they can keep up that pricing, but I could even get a Silverstone Ice Mist for around 160 and that one performs like quite a bit better. So I hope to see the price fall down at some point to like 140, 145 euros. But as for the 175 euro price tag, I mean, it's a great AIO. It's maybe average at uh, very low workloads, but once the chip gets harder, the AIO becomes substantially better in relations to other AIOs. It's just not the best. I mean, it's a great AIO, but the LF3 420 is better, the Ice Mist is better, so uh, yeah, there's that. If the design suits you and you are willing to sacrifice or you don't have the space for a 420 uh, freezer and uh, you prefer this one, I mean, it will do great on whatever chip you want to wanna pair it to, i9 or 9, it will handle everything, but it's just not the best. But okay, this should be everything for the brand new Be Quiet Silent Loop 3 in 420, and at this point a huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance, except for the NDA stuff, because you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to make a petition for Be Quiet to finally release a dark loop. It doesn't have to be like uh, the best lineup, the name just sounds cool. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Silverstone Ice Mist in 420. That thing was brutal. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.